Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to the second episode of my festive series, Building a Christmas Loco. Last week you saw me working on the electrics on the humble Hornby 040. I converted it to DCC, added a firebox flicker, and even managed to get a smoke generator working as well. Today though, I need to take this mass of wires and make it look a bit more like a steam engine again. And not just any steam engine, it needs to look festive. So today is going to be all about the Christmas decoration. So you may have forgotten what it looks like, but here is the body shell for my Hornby 040 in its early crest BR black livery. Before I start painting over this though, there's a few steps I need to take. The first being to remove the funnel. Now the reason for this is that the smoke generator I've used is far too large to fit inside the Loco's actual funnel, so as you can see I'm just sawing this off. With a bit of time and care you can see that it does come away. Underneath this is a tiny hole that I'd made previously, and now I'm basically going to open this out until the smoke generator fits through it. And I'm doing this using a combination of the pin drill and also a needle file as well, as I do need this to look neat and tidy. I think that'll be wide enough now, so let's just try pushing the smoke generator through the hole. And yeah, that does seem to fit. And the plan here is that the smoke generator itself will become the chimney, so it'll have a bit of a different look, but I think I quite like that. Moving on, as nice as this British Railways livery is, it's not very festive, so I think what I'm going to do is repaint the loco in a nice red. Before I do that though, I want to remove all the existing printed detail on the loco, seeing as I don't want that to show through underneath the paint that I'm about to put on. The way I went about removing them was to use a fiberglass pen. Essentially, I just dabbed a little bit of white spirit onto the printed area, and then I used the pen to rub the transfer away. Now, I'll admit, I think I was potentially doing this wrong, because I've seen other people do this, and it seems relatively easy for them. I had to work quite hard to get this printing off though, so if there's anyone out there who renumbers more delicate models, you'd certainly have my admiration. With all the printing removed on both sides of the loco, I can now move on to painting. I'm going to make this loco a nice festive red, but I do want the smoke box to remain black, which is why you can see here I'm adding some masking tape around the edge so that the paint doesn't accidentally spill over. I'm going to go for a nice maroon colour for the main body of the loco, and all the paints I'm using today are Humbrol enamels. You'll see at the bottom of the screen I'll list the numbers for any paint I use today, as I know I always get comments asking me what colours I'm using. Anyway, there wasn't much more preparation I could do to be honest, so really it's just a case of going for it. And then immediately changing my mind. No, as soon as I started putting this on I thought wouldn't it be a great idea to have a band of black along the top, similar to the paint schemes that you sometimes see on industrial hunslets and austerities. This required a bit more masking tape though, so that I could get a nice straight edge. However, one advantage is that this does solve the problem of me having to paint near the metal safety valves now, since I just won't be painting that area. So with more masking tape applied, it was time to have another go at painting. I wasn't sure how this colour would look originally. It was a choice between this and a much brighter, more vivid red that I have, but I think I made the right choice. While I did think the brighter red would feel a bit more festive, I did worry that it might end up looking too much like a toy, or too similar to the existing Christmas locos that Hornby already make. Anyway, as you can see, the paint is going on nicely, and I'm literally just brushing it on in the most simple way possible. It just goes to show that if, like me, you don't want to faff around with an airbrush, you can still get good results by doing it the old-fashioned way. So 
So sometime later, when everything was dry, I was able to come back and remove the masking tape from the main section of the body. Now I was able to see if my plan of keeping the black top on the saddle tank had worked. The line was a bit rough in some places, but it wasn't anything I couldn't clean up, and I'm actually really pleased with how this has turned out. I think it looks so much better than it just being solid maroon all over, and even though this livery is very much going to be freelance, I do think it makes it look just that little bit more realistic. So with a general coat of paint on the loco, it's looking a lot better already, and it's now time to turn my attention to the detailing. I think it would make it look a lot more special if I added some lining to the saddle tank and perhaps to the side of the cab as well. But having never done any kind of lining or detail work like this before, I don't really know how it's going to go, so stay tuned to find out what happens with that. First though, I wanted to turn my attention to the cab, and the moulded cab detail on the Hornby 040 is actually pretty good. I was quite surprised by this, and so I wanted to feature it a bit more by sort of maybe going in there and painting a little bit of the detail. But before I could do that, there was one little quick step I needed to do first. And that thing was to drill a hole for the firebox LED. Yes, I meant to do this earlier when I cut off the chimney, but I was so eager to get painting that I completely forgot about this step. Anyway, as you can see, I'm just using the pin drill again to make a pilot hole, and then afterwards I opened it up a bit more using the needle file again. I went for a square one this time to match the shape of the firebox doors, but I'm not actually sure it'll make any difference when the LED is in there. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, the moulded detail inside the cab is actually really good, considering how basic these locos are, and so I wanted to draw attention to that. I don't have any particular plan here, I'm just going to sort of go with what feels right, and because the detail is so small, I'm applying most of the colour using the very tip of a cocktail stick. First up, the gauges and dials are going to get a bit of white. The regulator and some of the other controls get painted bright red. And then the really tricky task was to try and pick out as much of the pipework as I could with a metallic gold and occasional dabs of silver as well. Now, does this live up to the painted cabs that we're used to seeing from Hornby and Backman and other manufacturers? No, of course not. But it does add a bit of extra detail, and considering I've got the firebox LED to install here, that's going to draw attention to the open cab, so I do think this was worthwhile. Now it's time to do a really tricky task that I have to admit I've been dreading, and that is adding lining. To do this, I've got some transfers from HMRS, which I believe stands for the Historical Model Railway Society. This particular sheet I've got is for lining LNER locos, and while I'm not finishing my Christmas loco in an LNER livery, I do think the white and black lining will make it look really smart. So, with the straight section cut out, I can apply it to the body. Now these are actually press fix transfers, which means you don't soak them in water straight away like normal water slide transfers. Instead, you position the transfer where you want on the loco and then press it down. The transfer is slightly sticky, so it'll stay where you need it to, although you can reposition it if you don't get it perfect on the first go. After this, I then took a cotton bud soaked with water and just dampened the backing paper. As the paper takes on the moisture, it comes away from the transfer and so I can remove it, and now you can see we have the strip of lining in place on the loco. And also as the water soaks into the transfer, that makes it stick to the body more as well. Really, it's now just a case of repeating this process until I have all of the lining in place.
For the ends of the saddle tank, the transfer sheet does come with some rounded corners ready printed, so it's just a case of lining it up with the transfers I've already put down. This of course was easier said than done. All of these transfers are tiny and getting the corners to line up with everything else was a real challenge. And then of course once I'd completed it on one side, I had to repeat the whole process again on the other side. Thankfully though, you don't have to sit through the whole thing, so this is very much a heavily edited version of the task. Once all was said and done, this is what the completed lining looked like. One final step with the body for me was to paint the dial at the front of the loco. It seemed a bit wrong for the rest of the loco to have all of these fancy embellishments, so I just gave it a quick going over with some silver paint. This really finishes off the decoration in my opinion. After all, it's Christmas, so it can be big and over the top and shiny. That said, I do think there is still a slight air of realism to this livery and the decoration, even though it's not based on any particular prototype. So now that the Loco's body is complete, I now have the tricky task of fitting everything back together. And this means securing the decoder in place, fitting that firebox glow into the cap, and most importantly, getting the smoke generator up through the hole in the smoke box. But before I can do any of that, there is a really big problem that I need to solve. That big problem was on the metal footplate, which so far we haven't paid much attention to. Now you can see at the front here, there's this chunk of metal which goes up into the smoke box. The problem is, this is exactly where the smoke generator needs to go. Unfortunately, that means I'm gonna have to be quite drastic here and saw this off. Now I'll admit, I was quite timid when I started this because I didn't want to accidentally damage anything else. Like the transfers, this did take quite a bit of time and I didn't film the whole thing, but you can see here the last few moments as I was getting really close to the end and then I was able to just break it away. And with that done, I now have the task of fitting everything back together. As you can see, I've got the chassis back in with its massive wires, and the first thing to do is to try and tame some of those. I started by sticking the tiny LED for the firebox on the back of the motor housing. Now this is just a rough position at the moment, but I'll fine tune this once I've got the body back into place. Next, I'm gonna get the decoder stuck down in place on top of the motor using some black tack. I've actually opted to have it slightly hang over the worm drive here. My logic being that it will stop any wires from accidentally coming into contact with the gears. Next, I'll twist up some of those excess wires from the firebox LED. I guess they assume that you might be fitting this into a much larger loco, and so if space really is a problem, I could always cut these wires down and resolder the connections. Now I'm gonna take the footplate and try and get this back over the chassis. First, I'll thread the smoke generator through and any other excess wires and then I'll try and push this down into position.
and with a bit of manoeuvring it has gone into place without trapping any of the wires. Next up is the big task of getting the smoke generator into position and I really hope I've cut away enough of the metal footplate for this to fit inside. I'm hoping that when I push the smoke generator through the hole in the smoke box I made earlier, the black tack will stick to the inside of the body and hold it in position. Right, well, you can see the generator has gone through the hole just like I planned. Now I just have to get the rest of the wires inside the body as I try and clip it all back together. It is a little bit of a struggle, but I'm just trying to be patient here and I'm using the screwdriver just to push any loose wires up inside the body cavity as much as I can. And then I think if I just push this the rest of the way down now, yeah, that's actually fit into place. And I'm just checking that the smoke generator has enough space and that all looks good there too. So fantastic, that is the Loco back together and pretty much complete, and it's a little stunner, isn't it? I don't know if I'm just saying that because I'm the one that's done all the work on it, but I really do like the look of this engine. Anyway, it may all be back in one piece, but will it still work now all the wires and the mechanism are contained inside the body? I'm going to do a full test here, so I'll fill up the smoke generator once more. And you may have noticed I have the loco the other way around this time, so we'll be able to see if the firebox flicker works as well. So here we go, first let's test the motor. And yeah, it still works and we still have that really nice controlled slow speed. I'll put the firebox LED on now. And wow, that's actually really cool. I did say I thought it would look much better once it was installed properly, and I'm glad I was proved right on that, because it does look great flickering away inside there. And actually, it's made me realise that I'm really going to need some figures for a loco crew to finish this off. And now, finally, I'll switch on the smoke generator, and after giving it a moment to heat up... There we go! It's spluttering a little at first, but it'll soon settle down. And there you go, you can see it's all working really nicely. I've actually grown quite attached to this little loco, and while it did just start out as a Christmas project for the channel, I'm actually really looking forward to running this little guy. I think really it does need a name, and seeing as it's Christmas and the loco is in a red livery, Rudolph seems to suit it quite well. So yeah, I cannot wait to see Rudolph at the front of a train on my layout. And so here is the finished Loco, or should I say Rudolph, back together and complete, and I am so pleased with how this project has turned out. I think the only other thing I would add at this point is that now that I have named him Rudolph, I might get some custom nameplates made up for him, so I do need to do that in the future. Now, we know that Rudolph works perfectly well on the rolling road, but how will he fare on an actual model railway layout with an actual train? Well, to find out, you're going to have to tune in next week. But for now, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, do hit that subscribe button and the bell icon too. And here's a little preview of what you can expect next week.